Oh, yes, Eric. It's thank God it's Friday and so realistic. I, I can't Hoorah. ever get past that intro just thinking of how realistic that. Oh, yeah, you're a genuine monkey. Chimp slash ape sound is. We're going to get bananas. As Gwen said, she's a complete gem. She would never lie to us, but we're also going to do a bit of clowning around there. You came up About with time. what I think is a great combo here. You down with the clown? <laughs> you down with the clown? We're going to be down with the clown, I think. <laughs> I don't know, because we're going to be talking about both Punchline and Harley Quinn. And really, since you ended up having Punchline come about, they've been working at a trajectory going right towards each other, Eric. And now they're here, and I do believe that we'll have a big face-off coming up down the line, which I will mention. Like when Nick Cage and John Travolta? Get to things. Exactly. That Honestly, the thing that's is, a freaky Friday, right? The thing that, now that you <laughs> say not. that, though, there, we, the thing is, we are coming to a head at one point. You're going to have to have Harley Quinn and Punchline face each other once again. They have a few times since she's been debuted, but the idea that we had Professor Pig and Punchline this week, like, I could see him going rogue and switching their faces around. That could happen. Well, with that, the reason why I do say that it's really going to be coming up, Teeny Howard is going to be writing the Harley book coming up in a month or so so that will even put them at more of a you know head-to-head deal like a they already had in catwoman so i think that that might be one of the reasons that she's on punchline but also maybe one of the reasons she's going to be on the old harley book and we'll see we'll see how that works out and we'll see what we think of this punchline book but before we get into that please go over to our twitter at weird science dc Follow us, we'll follow you back, and then go over and check out our website, WeirdScienceDCComics.com. Get written reviews there. Some say print is dead. I don't know, Eric. I'm not here to judge that, but hey, yeah, really. Also, go over to our YouTube channel. It is Weird Science Comics, and then go to our Patreon, Patreon.com slash Weird Science, where we have a bunch of shows, a lot of DC shows. One of the big things that we do each and every Thursday is we get together and do our badass Patreon only spotlight where we end up having a podcast that almost was two hours long. It ended up where it, I didn't even realize it. I ended up saying that, holy moly, I didn't realize. But with that, we did talk about what, Eric, because now I'm trying to remember what we talked about. We talked about the John Stewart book that came out sure this week, the Emerald Knight, Knight number, number one. one. And then we and talked Earth about the six. Stanley Earth Six Celebration uh, book which that's why it took a while. That is a big one, but we had some fun talking about that. And actually, we were impressed in that, surprisingly, with the Clone Reds, who we haven't been really positive with what they're doing with, say, the Batgirls and the whole deal with Wonder Woman. And I bring that up because the punchline, I, is, we liked the first issue, right? We, we yeah. kind of dug that. The second issue was a bit down, so I was looking forward to this. And even when we get next to that, the Harley book, We've been down on that, but like the clone, anybody can impress us. Every issue is your time to impress. It's not a vendetta. And now some backdoor shade because the clone rats, they did have the uh, the chance to use the best of the Stanley Just Imagine characters with Mary Maxwell, the Flash. She is the best out of all of those. It's funny because we were talking about that and we were talking about back in the day that you were going to collect these. You were real excited about that Just Imagine Stan Lee stuff, and you Couldn't kind wait. of fell off it pretty quick. And really, it was a Superman <laughs> that ended up then throwing I you. It's like, yeah, just imagine Superman's a piece of crap. Okay, I just imagine it. Then I saw it. Don't and like it. So for some, not for some reason, I, I usually can't sleep very well at night. So I thought, you know what? I'm not Screen just going to sit around and listen to, you know, Black Pink or anything. I'm actually going to go. I go. Yeah, exactly. I, well, there was some. Big giant black pink news, but that's not for here or now. Or so anywhere. I end up, I'm on the app, and for me, but I end up, I just pulled up the deal and I read the Wonder Woman issue, which I remember you saying that. You just thought, imagine Wonder Woman, yeah. Yeah, you thought that Superman, in the way they presented the trade, it seemed, I don't know how they're going in order, but in the trade that's on the app, you end up having Wonder Woman second. Because okay. I actually was actually going to read the Superman because the right. idea of how crazy, you know, over the top piece of crap he was. But I'm going through. I'm like, oh, yeah, there's the Batman. I remember. Remember when we had the just hands? Remember when we were talking? The guy had the jacket, just hands and feet. I do. I'm telling you, it was so <laughs> ridiculous. Hands I started and feet. La- hands and feet. I started laughing so much. So I get that. It's not oh, the Wonder- Foot Clan. It's the hands no, and feet. No, no, the hands and feet. So I, I go, oh, Wonder Woman's next. So I started reading it. And boy, not much to it. The, the Stan Lee stuff, 
they had, you know, he might have had some ideas, but by the end, I'm like, well, just imagine right, right, right there with the just imagine because you have the Batman. Oh, he's a wrestler. Okay, that makes sense. And Stanley, Maria Mendoza, what's she doing? She works at a newspaper. Okay, this is all working out for Stanley. Yeah, and the the greatest part of it is that the newspaper is like the last three things yeah. of it. She was just in a village where things were going wrong, and then she ends up, uh, you know, working for a newspaper. One of the fun things, though, is the Superman deal. As a little thing, as I went through, you end up where you have this alien. He comes down and he needs to come up with a secret identity name. And he looks at a truck. He's going to Kaiser so say this shit. He looks at he looks at a truck that basically says Peter Kent uh, or uh, Peter Clark uh, Clark. And then he looks at a street sign that says Kent Parker and picks the (laughs) kind of a funny deal. It actually made me giggle. But those things are okay. But we did talk about those. Just imagine. The deal, and he had some fun with it. it. It's neat to see some different versions of things and whatnot. I think it just, it's neat. <laughs> yeah, I think it's neat, but that the issue itself needed some more space and time with that. But again, you can go and listen to that. It's a Patreon only show that's picked by the badasses of Get Fresh Crew. And you just go over to the Weird Science, uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash weird science. But here we are. For our clowning around, our clowning around, <laughs> doing the monkey business here. And what are we going to start with? Punchline, the Gotham game number three, written by Teeny Howard and Blake Howard, with art by Max Rayner, Luis Guerrero, and Becca Carey. And in this issue of Punchline, we're picking up where we left off in the previous issue of Catwoman, where Catwoman and her assorted gang of misfits, including, you know, the alley town freaking like the strays. Batman, you had that freaking League of Assassins guy who's now dead that I can't think of the names and try to talk about. Valmont. It. Valmont, thank you. Yep. But- they kicked the crap out of Punchline Sexy and her royal Valmont, flesh gang. Sexiest dead yeah, Valmont. Yeah, kicked the ass of him. Yeah. But but now the Punchline, she's on the retreat with her royal flesh gang. And it seems like the first thing you did, you got to get King's face all like, you know, all cleaned up, all healed up. But for some reason, they decided, let's get Professor Piggin here to do it. And he just ends up, I want the scene where Professor Piggin's done his his stitching of King's face here. And King asks for the mirror like we had in Batman 89. It's the Joker. Like, mirror, mirror. It's like, you look look at the surprise I have. How, how do you expect me to do my best work here? But the thing is, King knows better because Professor Pig goddamn insane. And Professor Pig thinks he did his best goddamn work here. Yeah, yeah. He he does think that he did great. Now, there Perfect. is a little bit of a play at the beginning. <laughs> I did it all perfectly. You have a lot of uh, Genevieve Valentine's run being aped in this in the Catwoman, I mean, originally, and they had the Valentines, you know, Carvery. I don't know if that was a little shout out. It was a little odd when I saw that. But when you go into this, I don't know. It, it's one of those things where, first off, Queen doesn't seem that concerned anyway, and they, they seem to be like two two lovers, Eric. And oh, she's uh, King's just there. a butterface now. Well, he is, and it seems weird, face. but <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, the, the big play that I have here, though, is kind of a and again, I said there's no vendetta, but it's a Teeny Howard thing. And I think we're starting to see it. We're already seeing it in Catwoman. And even then, these books are starting to jumble in my mind. I even t- talk about that Genevieve Valentine deal that I thought, oh, we get this. But in this, she doesn't do well with, you know, setting up a story and, and getting a story that has, to me, a strong foundation. So when you get into these issues, a lot of times it just feels like random scenes it ends up feeling like almost like, OK, what's the the play of the day, the play of the month or whatever? Because when you get into this, like you said, it just came out of that Catwoman book, but it doesn't quite feel like that had any weight to anything, even with Alley Town in a wreck and everybody's gone. Nobody knows in this book even what they're doing, what the plan is, because I don't think Punchline actually has one. And it's one of those things that as the issues go, it's it's like she loses the story. The more story she tells, which is odd to me. And I don't know. This ends up, I'm not angry about this issue. I don't hate it, but it's just never is grabbing me. It, it, it well, doesn't it's a do weird anything situation enough here. Because I do think that it actually is evolving pretty well. The Catwoman stuff came to a head way too fast in my mind because now we have Catwoman behind bars for, you know, killing Valmont or freaking Amygdala. I don't know who, who's blaming what on Amygdala at this point in time for his death, but. We have the idea that we are moving on from our exo drug distribution that the punchline was doing with the Royal Flesh Gang. But with our moving on, you know, Catwoman goes in her own direction. So she's no longer a threat that her book can go in somewhere else at this point in time. Punchline's going in another direction, but thankfully that direction seems to be going back to the Joker 
backup storyline with dealing with Harper Rowe and the well, Royal Flesh Gang and stuff about along it. those lines. And when you're saying that, it's true. You get it. But the EXO stuff never really even started my mind. No, I agree. When It came to a head way too fast. Yeah, and that's, that's the problem I have is when you do that and, and the Catwoman book, you ended up starting out. We really liked it. And then at about the fourth issue in the middle of the everything changed and then we were going off to europe and then we were coming back the harley quinn two shot yeah and and this really feels like i'm worried that it's getting to that point because i don't know like if somebody said oh what's the book about you know you got the royal flesh gang they're kind of hanging we had this but that's pushed aside you might be getting out of jail and needs to make a name for herself the end (laughs) well and the weird part of it is i think that where we lost a little bit of the narrative here was that she kind of did have a name for herself this whole deal with the trial trial of the century i was told there was and so when she ended up and that was the point where we were really dealing with social media and do they do people end up loving toxic people and are they going to elevate her even though she didn't need it are they going to use her as this she's a victim and all that and that kind of wasn't there. And now all of a sudden it seems like it might be coming back. But when you do come back to it, it feels again like, oh, well, what are we doing? What happened to the EXO deal? What's this? And even I'll, I'll tell you the other thing that really gets me in this. And I know that there's books like it, but it's not really a likable character in this book. You really don't have anybody to kind of Poor get Bluebird. behind. And well, Bluebird shows up, but I don't expect her to even be there that long. I don't know how long they're going to settle on that. I think she's actually just to get Cohen back in the book and kind of get that play because he was kind of involved with the, the old bluff. bluff. But yeah. even the bluff, bluff. Yeah, he said, oh, what is he, the Ten of Diamonds? Yeah, yeah. And he just shows up kind of like, oh, yeah. Like everything in this this issue to me ends up being almost like, oh, yeah, you're getting back to that. Oh, yeah, I remember that. It never, it doesn't feel like. You know, it's progressing as much as it should. Like you said, it came to a head way too quick. And then you're like throwing other characters in. And I, I was kind of like, kind of feel like it's leaving me behind a little bit, well, though. The thing is, it was a weird thing where I think they needed to tie in with Catwoman, which I appreciate because it broadens the story, makes it a bigger thing in Gotham right now. Like it actually means something outside of its own book because we're dealing with other characters, including Batman, who came in for a bit. But when you have the situation where the exo drug that she wanted to distribute, now that we've gone and blown up the Ace Chemicals plant that she was using to, like, you know, create this drug, you, you really do have to move on because now we've poisoned Alleytown. It's a freaking catastrophe down there that's being blamed on Catwoman, which will affect her in that book. Well, Punchline, she needs to come up with another plan. That, like, you know, I don't know if she's going to go with the XO plan. So more by the end of this, it feels like let's go back to revenge on Harper Rowe. And also, she is constantly throughout this issue losing it to the point where she has killed a guy and taken over his apartment. And now the guys talk to him what it looks like in the voice of the Joker. She's going to saw this dead body up, get rid of it because she is just losing her mind. Is it the idea of a, a mental uh, dis- uh, instability that she had previously? Or is it because she's like concocting all of these gases and drugs that are highly <laughs> effective? I didn't we really don't love know. that idea. I don't like the idea of like, well, am I, you know, schizophrenic or am I just high as... I have been breathing a lot of toxic waste. Yeah, she's like, I have been making that XO. I might be high right now, but I might just be crazy. And, uh, you know, well, either I find or. That interesting. Yeah, I, I didn't because I think that that's just going to kind of move on, especially because it looks like she's cutting up the body and kind of getting rid of it. I don't know. We'll have to see. But right now she's putting herself out in the open. Like she is so perturbed by what's happening here right now after this whole XO fiasco and Catwoman. Where she just cuts up a body, puts it in a bunch of suitcases, drives to a bridge where Harper Rowe as Bluebird finds her. She's just out in the open dumping body parts. Like she is very unstable and willing to go like above and beyond to like almost just like get the job done, whether it's going to put her in danger once again. Yeah, I wish that you were getting more of this idea where she's like, hey, listen, I already was on trial and they couldn't do it. We didn't really see the trial. It really was nothing. But I think it was the like idea, two pages. I could go and I could go downtown and kill somebody and they'll end up praising me. And she's just so brazen. But it just feels like she's just doing things. And then you end up on the side. You get, you know, Jack, who's doing his laser eye. And He's I, I just don't know. I just don't know if this is interesting to me, especially without having really you know, a, a forward progression of, okay, this is what this book is about after three issues. Yeah, it's about Punchline, but even her gang, even the, the uh, Royal Flush gang, they, they don't really even know what they're doing. They keep asking well, her, at this well, point, what's going on? I don't think Punchline on? knows because everything was, like, pulled away from her at this point in time. So even by the end, we have Bluff show up, who is the one-time bo- boyfriend of Cullen Bro, you know, Bluebird's brother. 
he got rid of it, but it seems like he still has a feeling like maybe I can change him attitude with old bluff over there. But she, like, you know, since punchline is running a bunch of the Royal flesh gang, even the lower members who just have little tattoos on them, but aren't really, you know, card themed people like bluff himself. We're going like, we're back on track for, all right, plan A is done. I didn't have a plan B, but you know what I had before that? I had revenge and a hatred for Harper Rose. So we're going to get on back on that trolley. So, hey, Bluff, call your ex-boyfriend. We're him down here. I'm going to go and use his ass to get back to Harper Rose because right now that's all I have while my mind is dwindling. Yeah, it just seemed weird, though, that the Harper Rose thing wasn't a thing until Harper Rowe runs into her when she's throwing body parts over. And is it just like, oh, I got to get rid of her because she might report me? Or is it full out like, man, Vendetta. we're going to really get it? But it just, it almost feels, again, I don't think Teeny Howard's very good at storytelling. This is why I ended up quitting the X-Men books because of her Excalibur book that just kind of meandered. And this feels like it again where you're just going with, well, what else do we have in the tank? Well, we have Harper, Rowe, and Cullen. All right, let's do something with that. I kind of went a well, little more. It feels and I like actually, they should have been there the entire time, though, yeah, too. Well, they should have been. It might have. I think you would have been better served to start with that and saying, listen, I got off uh, in the trial. And I mean, I got off, Eric. And the idea... Crazy where I'm going to take you down. Like, you can't touch me. I'm going to take... And then get to the EXO. The EXO stuff, again, it almost was just... You, you look at it now and the, the setup of it. Well, we're going to go into Aiko Hasegawa's, you know, factory that she's eventually going to find us anyway. We'll do this, but that didn't work. It blew up. We'll blame it on Catwoman. It, it was weird. It was odd. But See, when you get to this, this, I just... It's fine. The weirdest part about it, because we are finally getting back to what we had in the Joker backup, you know, I mean, like the punchline backup in the Joker book. The weirdest part is that we have this new character, Ventura Fremont, who's a part of the D- DA's office, who wants to get to the bottom of this and find out, like, why Catwoman's being blamed for this, because she she trusts that Catwoman is innocent for some reason, and is going to be on some kind of vendetta herself, I guess, to take punchline down. It is a spread page of this new character who's investigating something that she shouldn't be investigating, and I have no idea why it's here and why it's presented in the way it is. I think that most people, and maybe it was the play, I mean, you thought it was her name, Montoya, when you first see it. Oh, Commissioner Montoya is going to check it. No, it's this new girl. I love that she has this mask on because they're in this, you know, hazmat area. Yeah. But yet she's got her collar she's destroyed popped. chemical, pu- <laughs> she's chemical got the bu- company. The button's down. She's like, hey, no chemical's going to hurt this. And like, hey, flash in the badge. I, I don't mind her. I actually, I'm a little intrigued, though, in the opposite side, this guy who's working the scene here in his head, he's just completely like the idea of playing up. Hey, get this. It's a toxic area, and this guy's very toxic. Get it? Because this guy is right away, he's a bit over the top with some things there. But He's got a lot of work to do. Now someone's just making him ask questions in a toxic environment, and she gets sick and might land on his freaking desk. He doesn't need that shit. But again, also, it's like he's against Catwoman. We got a rap sheet for the cat that's longer than my arm. And again, they're not wrong, because while we know that Catwoman is an anti-hero here, to the majority of people in the legal services or anything along those lines, she is a bad thief. <laughs> yeah, she she is, but she's now Rap in jail. She so, I, mean, arm, I love that he's like, I'm investigating something. Well, she's already in jail. Like, she, oh, yeah, well, it's still longer than my arm. Got them little T Rex on. She only has three crimes, right? For the She's in jail for murder right now. We could always add to that for what we find in this wreckage. <laughs> in that, I think, again, going too far, she should be in for more than murder. I mean, she blew up a bill. She's confessed, they say, to blowing up this building and causing a eco disaster in Alleytown. So I think she might have Poor a little Alleytown. more charges than that. But I guess the murder trumps all of that. But yeah, you end up, I like to where this guy's like, yeah, you can look, but that mask you have on, it's only going to last a couple hours. She's like, all right. And then at the end, it a couple hours. It was anyway. like 10 minutes. She, say, uh, she takes it off anyway at the end. And I'm like, all right. She just takes it off. Oh, no. She's huffing. That mask is good for about maybe five minutes. So after this question, she knows that, like, she takes it off because it's doing nothing. <laughs> Looks like a regular mask to me. I, I don't know. This guy's got his hazmat. So I'm surprised he doesn't take off his hat. Uh, but you end up with all this going on. And. It just felt like a bit of a jumble when you end up getting Bluff in. Even when Bluff Bluff comes in and his I had dialogue, no idea who he was. No, I didn't either. And he comes I in. Forgot I forgot like, that his name was Bluff. I forgot who this guy was. Because at this point in time, because we haven't been dealing with it in the punchline Gotham game book, I didn't think we were going to go back to any of the like the Joker backup stuff with the punchline story that we had previously. So when this, this blonde-haired dude shows up, starts beating up Jack, I'm like, he, even when he calls him Bluff, I'm like, what kind of name is Bluff? Come yeah, on, I know. Bluff. Yeah, I thought that, they like, did you run out of cards? I mean, this <laughs> is the Royal Bluff. And even, I like the idea where 
you know, there's Jack, and they're like, hey, Nate, and he's like, hey, call me Jack. Hey, One-Eyed Jack, and they're kind of making fun of him, and he's doing his deal. He's shooting one little Jacks targets, cool. right? So he ends up, though, where he just, like, walks out of the room after what I did not understand right away what, what ended up King's like, here, let me get the zip drive. I thought that he was like, oh, no, I am shutting down now. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> I'm like, did that come out of his ear? But he ends up like, hey, check out the stats. He's talking to Io, which we don't really know much about. But you end up where he walks Is out of Io this like one zero. Nah, whatever. He walk, <laughs> yeah, Jack walks out of this like what I would like to call the gym, but it's just an open area. He walks out. It's a warehouse with some crates. All of a sudden, Bluff comes over. And I, I thought that I missed something because he almost makes it feel like Jack has gone downtown somewhere because, hey. You got a lot of nerve coming here. I'm like, but he was he was just working out in there with his eye. Like, what do you mean by that? And he's like, listen here, but I like his over the top dialogue. Save the laser light show. I heard you're in there ready to crash. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Because remember, he's like, oh my god, I'm I'm you shooting keep it this up, yeah. thing, and, and he's like, oh, how are you gonna power your little gadgets? And then I didn't know what happened. He ends up where the eyes on fire. I didn't know exactly what he did or didn't do there. It looks like it shut down somehow. Yeah. But Bluff was involved. I don't know. Does he have little gadgets himself? I, I think that he didn't. He couldn't do it because he burned it out because he used it too much. Yes, we had to let it cool off for a while. It looks like he lit it up almost like a Superman. Like he's getting m- mad and then it burns up. And he's like, oh, no, it hurts. It hurts. And then you have them, you know, you have Bluff punch the wall and just going on. But this is the play that they're going to get Cullen with him. You know, luring him downtown. It is funny a bit of progression here because, like I said, I didn't remember Bluff because I wasn't thinking about the original punchline backup in the Joker series. So didn't know we're getting back to that. So I didn't expect it. But I was also had my mind on other things because when old Jack and the rest of the Royal Flesh getting the punchline hats right now, like her lieutenants, are just testing Jack's limitations with his laser eye. I, I didn't realize that, you know, King had his face all wrapped up after the Professor picks it. So for some reason, when I initially looked at it, I was about to turn the page. He thought it was Master Shredder. For some reason, it looked like Shredder to me, and he just pulled something out, and all of a sudden, this became the Foot Clan from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action movie with well, kids running go. around in a warehouse. He's there, they're running around the warehouse, they're all like, smoking it up. Shredder, who's this blonde haired guy? Oh, What's man, going look on? At this guy. I just, when, when the look on his face when he ended up pulling out that drive of the deal, it looks like he's like, I cannot compute now. It just was so odd, but yeah, there you go. Royal Flush Gang here. Uh, we don't get a lot of them around, so you have that. Yeah, you have Bluff, and he's pissed off. He's yeah, I like to wear the big trash talk. This gang is my blood, and if there's one thing I know, it's when to place bets. I'm like that. That's not great trash talk. I mean, it should have been. You know what I know? When to fold them. He should have Kenny Rogers this shit up there with this guy. But they, I know when to place bets. All right. Thanks a lot there, buddy. He's got card-themed stuff. He probably has gone through the – run the gamut of all this other stuff as well. I just imagine you starting up your own gang and trying to trash talk. Listen here, guy. I got a short <laughs> temper. <laughs> That's all it would be. Listen here. That's I know, pretty low. I only know little about you. But hey, you know, you better <laughs> well, watch out. Again, he doesn't have a lot to play with. Poor okay. Bluff. Here's, here's what I'm playing with. He ends up where – Jack says, listen, I'm getting tired of your and he stops. I'm, no, you listen. Some of us have been in this gang far longer than you. I'm flesh gang royalty. This gang is my blood. And if there's one thing I know about, it's when someone's faking it. Right there. He's bluff. That would make more sense. And I'd be like, all right, you did it. I just read everything but changed two words. And it well, makes aren't it you in a small wonder? He is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You end up where he says, I'm tired. He's going to say, I'm tired of your bull crap. And the whole play of this trash talk goes on way too long, first off. And then he goes, I know when to place bets. That it does. Doesn't, doesn't make sense. He's like, when do you? Right before the game. <laughs> you got to get him before right. the kickoff. It's, right? I know when to rule. place bets. Yeah, you know, even if he said, I know who to bet on and who to fold. Something like that. I and don't I'm know. All in. I'm telling you, his name is Bluff. Just say he knows when people are faking. I know when people are trying to lie. I know whatever. But yeah, you have it. And I would go but with the But then he'd look at him like, ah, oh, you're just using another ner- a word for your name, Bluff. Exactly. But that's what yeah, you do. That's, that's part of the deal. Placing bets. He's like, listen. Or he's like, listen, I don't know about. <laughs> I'm just going to make up a shelf. I don't know about you. 
but I go with where the odds are. You know, they do that. You know what I mean? You want to get him a headlock? Like, I call this the Texas Hold'em. That's what he should do. That'd be good. See, you're getting on with me. And he's like, hey, he punches out all of his teeth and goes, hey, 52 teeth pickup. He's got a lot of teeth. (laughs) He's like, I don't have that many teeth. What am I, a shark? Oh, well, maybe you are a lone shark. Get out of here, asshole. There you go. We won, Eric. We just How did it. How <laughs> many teeth does a shark have? A shark? I think they have a million. A million teeth. Why would it end up being 52? Well, I feel like it's crazy because uh, apparently these these monsters of the sea got over three, as many yeah, as 3,000 Yeah, I know. Well, teeth. there you go. Yeah, that's why I said. Hey, I know I they have something. a ton. They have, they have all different rows, Eric. They lose rows up to 100 per day. Man, you're learning so much on this podcast. It, it is great. Listen, you're just a cavity, and I, I'm going to yeah. start a sh- I'm the shark. shark, right? I'm the shark. <laughs> we got to keep moving, or we I'm die. The uh, you're the chet, and there we go. We're, we're snapping our fingers and dancing. Next thing on my switchblade is actually a comb. I'm combing my hair. You actually have a switchblade and a knife me. You got me. I'm like, my You're hair. You're playing knifey Comey. I'm like, how are you doing this? I brought a comb to a knife fight. What am I doing? But then I go down. I'm like, thank God my hair's okay. Uh, but I wear a hat a lot. Here, True. So it wouldn't be a little it's all deal. I do actually, speaking of vain, I do actually like this look for Bluff. He, he's got like, I don't know, that feathered collar, but also seems to have a uh, turtleneck. He's got a lot of things going on, this guy, right? I don't know. Maybe it's a, a mock turtleneck doesn't that go well with bluff a mock turtleneck well, the thing is everybody <laughs> hates know. turtlenecks i'm hoping that we see it in all these I like media turtlenecks i love turtlenecks and as soon as everybody started bagging them it made me so sad because i they love don't wearing. love me eric uh because i have a problem because i get a little antsy with that turtleneck where it's you know i feel like it's choking me out a little well, the thing is i like going along life like that because that's my kink <laughs> yeah well there you go you like day to hard out. on Oh, my God, you're Batman. I'm the choker. <laughs> oh, but yeah, you end up from that scene where you do and reintroduce Bluff. And again, I actually like you. So who the hell is this guy? Bluff. Holy moly. But then we, we figure it out. I yeah, I actually thought that when he does get a hold of Cullen, I thought Cullen told him to hit the skids. But he did. Yeah, yeah I guess. Cullen, he's like, he's that guy. He's like, I can change him. It, that might he's be not so like, bad. I thought I was out. He's pulling me back. God, he's in. got that great body. He said so. He's like, I love the, the sexy talk about the bluffins and stuff when we're in the sack. And he's I such also, a card. He's got a, he's got a turtle back. I mean, what what can <laughs> you do? Uh, but you end up then where punchline just decides to just stop in the middle of the bridge and just throw body parts over and really. I know that this is that the wind. there is a lot of body parts, a lot of suitcases. I you could have just put them suitcases? all in a garbage bag right over there. Or well, again, you say that that's what you call a suitcase. Well, that is true. That is true. <laughs> uh, and I call you a toilet face. I don't know why oh. that seemed to make sense to me, but yeah, she's like, "Oh my, I have to do laundry, gross," because she got the, the shit on her. And then that's when Bluebird shows up, and it's Harper Row. She shows up out of nowhere. But we like Harper, and I didn't Don't think that she was. Her. She didn't see. She didn't seem as you know utilized as I wished in that backup. But she was there, kind of played. She was a dummy throughout. But well, you that's know, the thing she, is, in that like this, she's not a very capable member of the Bat family, and I hope that she's able to progress a bit because even Duke Thomas was able to become something like you know the signal isn't mentioned all the time, but it seems like he's a capable member member with or without these light powers or darkness powers that he has. To be, you know, a useful member of the Bat family. You say that. Bluebird, these are the sort of books that these kind of characters could show up. I wouldn't agreed. mind having. But like Bluebird, she's been around since the early days of the New 52 on this path to become this whole thing. And she's rarely ever utilized. And when she is, I actually kind of like seeing her get her ass kicked because it makes sense because she doesn't have the training that everybody else in the Bat family gets. I don't even know if she's considered part of the Bat family, but I like to do it. No, Batman at one point, he's like punched her in the face. Like after, yeah, and after Batman and Robin Eternal pretty much said, listen, you suck. Here's some money. Go to college. <laughs> and, you know, avoid this She's path. She's on a domino mask. Yeah, avoid this path because you, you don't need it. She's like Tim Drake in the Detective Comics. She took a right when she should have taken a left. She didn't go off to Ivy University. So you end up where there she is. She's got her stick. She looks very Nightwing-esque here she as does. you see her. Uh, but doesn't fight as good as Nightwing. It's not very capable, really. 
what she should do. Her best superpower, and I don't know if everybody knows this, is the ability to get the phone and dial and get a real Bat Family member here to actually take care of Punchline. Because Punchline is really big. No, it's her ability to make us all feel. (laughs) But yeah, her tech is the deal. And I think that that's something that a lot of these writers now and even Tini Howard here, I hope that they realize that because she really should be over oh, yeah. the she, top. Well, that's the base. thing. Is she needs to be less Nightwing and more Oracle. Yeah. Yeah, she should be. You're exactly or right. A clever even a blend little, of both. Even a little Tim Drake involved there. You know, that whole deal with the computers and tech. I mean, that's what impressed Batman with her. She ended up having things in the sewers and working the stuff like that. And also really a thing that you're missing here. And it's weird. It's almost like they forgot about her character once she became Bluebird. Because then yeah. she just shows up and really her real superpower is to get her ass kicked because she shows up and really gets too. just <laughs> destroyed. It's been mine for a while. Uh, but sh- her dad and Cullen, that whole combo, it was really good. We actually did like the character a, a lot at one point, but it kind of yeah. she's more generic. She though, out, you know though. what I mean? Yeah, she fizzled out once she actually stepped into a costume and i think that that's the problem i like her well, that's kind because of she side. stepped to a costume and nobody wanted to do anything with her after that <laughs> yeah exactly i mean she could have been really good in the back girls book as just a side like instead of barbara that was her like, doing like the wallace Oracle west was a, was a big character to come out of the new 52 because he didn't exist before that and eventually you know like you know as the new 52 progressed into the uh rebirth and stuff like that he became a like a a mainstay of the like the flash family and titans and stuff along those lines but the thing is Harper and like you know, even Duke Thomas like precede him. It seems like, and they didn't get the bump that he got to become you know on the cover of things. Because even on this, like she's like the main foil of punchline here. But on the the cover of this punchline book, we get more of a Beetlejuice <laughs> Joker cover. Yeah, you're not gonna get much of Bluebird on the cover. Uh, I like the idea though. What you're saying is, I wouldn't mind her teaming up with the Signal. That that would be a That'd really be cool little combo of like, hey, we got to do something. You know, nobody's really doing anything with us. Let's take it to the streets. And I and maybe I think that, that would have been one cool. day, like, I don't know what we're going to do with Stargirl and Red Arrow after we get done with the Lost Children, but maybe she could go and hang out with Courtney and I, uh, Emiko. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I think she's still wondering what happened to Anarchy. Right? She's, she's wondering. I'm she's like, oh my person. God. She gets word. Oh no, he died in another book and I wasn't around. You end up, though, with this where she gets her ass kicked again. I mean, this is what she does. She gets her ass kicked. But at least she's trying to stop things. Now, here's the funny play, too, because you end up having this fight where Alexis, what is what what was her training? I mean, she ended up going to college and like, you know who I think is cool? The Joker training done. I mean, her real training is let's just be crazy. Let's be over the top Man, crazy, I didn't and know I that might didn't kill have a somebody. Krav Maga course at her college. Yeah, really. That, the idea in my mind, she's just so crazy, she she might kill you. That's her. Tra- and Harper's her trying to do her deal. Yeah, yeah, really. So you end up where she is grabbing, you know, suitcases of body parts and, and <laughs> hitting her, and you end up Harper's having problems. But really, it goes real bad for Harper. In fact. One of Punchline's things is to be lickety split fast. I do not know how she got in that car and turned it on and got the hell out of there that quick. I mean, it was real quick, but Harper's left there, you know, almost like having, you know, five heads in the duffel bag or whatever the movie was. Was eight. it eight heads? Yeah. yeah. She's there and Mr. oh my Hitman. God, body parts. I'm like, okay, well, why were you attacking her originally for? Just littering suitcases. Well, I, I mean, I, just, I thought you might have known that something was going on. Like I'm this. just waiting for the point where Harper is left here with a suitcase full of body parts, and like Selena Kyle got fingered for oh, everything that it went down been there. Great. Now it's Harper Rose arrested for murder as well, and Punchline just leaving a trail of superheroes in her wake. I I love I love stories like that so much. Like take the cops come, and she's so embarrassed. Well, and also, well, well. Look who it is. Batman told her not to get involved, so she doesn't want to reveal that she was fighting Punchline. Uh, I just kind of came there. Huh, saying that defense again, huh? Harper Rowe. Next thing she's right I there in the next I always was a gateway drug to murder. And I, I don't know why, but I think you're Bullock there. Bullock <laughs> is showing up, and he's, he's going to collar her. Uh, but yeah, you end up Punchline just zips off. She's in that car. It's kind of a funny car. Like, it's just somebody's rando car here. I guess that guy's is, car. Now that she's gotten that freaking the, the dead guy talking her out of her system, it seems like immediately it's like, okay, 
We are going to take this fight to uh, Harper Row, but on my terms, hey, Bluff, call up your ex-boyfriend, get him outside because I'm going to stab his ass or use him as a, like, bait the, like, lower punchline on a Harper Row out. I almost want to tell you that I think the story is going to be based on the idea that there's punchline, right? She's young. I, I was going to call her hero for some reason, but a young, you know, Maybe influencer maybe. She's online, whatever. And really what a lot of people will rail on, oh, they're always bored. They don't know what to do. They have an attention span of nothing. Like, that's all we're going to get because it is funny where Punchline's all about the XO deal. That blows up. Now she's talking to a dead guy. She goes to get rid of him but runs into Harper. Now it's all Harper. It's like whatever is in her vision is the next plan because she's, she's like, screw it. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> what I think of. It's like, all right, here we go. And if it's like me, she's going to end up in an alley, pants half off. A freaking quarter somewhere and like, how the hell did I get here? And then you remember, you just say that it. because you don't want to admit it. <laughs> you don't want to admit you remember how you got there. But it does feel like it's one of those things playing with an attention span deal that she'll just go with what's in her vision, what's in yeah. her sights. And it's, it's like, wow, oh, well, not like I forgot all about that. You know, Bluebird, let's go after her now and knows more about it. So you get the Cullen deal. The XO thing, with. we don't have a place to make it anymore. All our people got their asses whooped. We can't really do that right now. But again, we never set it up is the problem. If you're going to set up a story, at least set it up to the point where, okay, what's happening now in the streets? How many people are now OD, not even ODing? All these withdrawals, Eric. I'm really worried about the youth of Gotham. But it ended up like it was the big thing, and then it's just done and wiped out. I, I just don't like, like that it's just wiped out. And then the old whole thing is just, you know, we have that other Call character. The whole thing off. That other character has to come in then and say, I'm going to be looking into this destruction. Oh, sure, I'm like, like, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was Even Ventura Highway Ventura by, Fremont. by American, by America, <laughs> that song. Uh, uh, but you end up where, yeah, Colin kind of gets lured in. And there you go. I like that that phone's there and we have to see that, oh, my God, it wasn't him typing. Or it was that I was like, I don't know why you have to see that. But there is Punchline ready to slice and dice. And I will tell you, it's funny because a lot of times you end up like we had in the uh, Dark Crisis finale, the number seven, where all of a sudden The Rock shows up as Black Adam, right? There's yeah. that one, really one panel was so much. I'm starting to see that they're making Alexa K. She looks more like Margot Robbie than Harley does in the regular deal. Because at the end, I swear to God, it looks just like her. Like she could play her as well. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I never really like Teeny Howard. I'm not at the point in this book that I'm angry about it. I just I kind of want to settle down, get a story going, see some character development, not just this scene to scene to scene just flying by and everything that you just went. And thought was important just gets thrown to the wayside to get to like a bluebird and things like that. And I'm worried that we're getting the same progression See, I'm calling that, that back we had on in track. Catwoman. Yeah, I, I, well, it's back on track. We're three issues in and now we're just going to a backup that wasn't hers. So I don't know if that's back on track because even when we started her Catwoman, well, she was doing is. more of Genevieve Valentine and then just left it, just left it behind. So I don't know how long we're going to do this, what it's going to be, but it just felt like I was done with that stuff. I wanted something new to progress the character, not go two issues and then double back U-turn to what we had in the backup before, before the trial. So it, to me, it feels and maybe like... they need to do that. They put Catwoman in the direction she needed to go. Yeah, but again, it's a weird play to get Catwoman. Like, you could tell your story different ways. You don't need, like, there's other ways to get Catwoman arrested. There's other ways to go... I just see Teeny Howard and, and the you know the history I have with her. She always ends up doing and this, Blake and Howard's it usually well. doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, her husband's doing this in the story. I don't know how much he does, but it just feels like the same thing that we get with all of her stories. She is okay. Her dialogue's okay. It's just the story. They rarely go places and then just stop and go another way. And I, like I said, this is like four books that I've read with her that they, she does the same thing. Hopefully it's not in this one. But it kind of seems like it might be. But again, I don't hate this issue. I just kind of want to get more of a progression, more character work of Punchline. And I didn't see it here. I just saw her going from scene to scene, reacting to each scene in some way, like with a lack of attention. But what would you give it? Uh, the thing is, I like the art in this a lot. I like that we're back on track with where we left off in the ba the backup of the Joker series with Punchline's character. Because... Her getting out and just starting the XO, and like the Royal Flush Gang stuff was always there, so that continued on. But going on after this and not seeing anything with like Harper Row, Bluebird, it felt weird because 
it seemed like they had a vendetta, like, you know, arch rival at that point in time. Not to have her there to jump into a Catwoman war felt weird. I was that there for it because I thought it enhanced the story and made Gotham more of a war zone. Like, you know, Punchline is a more of a threat because she's in all these other stories with all these other characters. Now that we're back on track, I'm looking forward to this because it also shows me that, I don't know, as much planning as Alexis K thinks she's doing, it thinks like she's becoming more and more dismantled at this point in time and can't even be counted on to trust herself with how her mind's working. I'm giving this a 6.8 out of 10. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm giving it a 6, just a flat 6, and, and my score just kind of keeps going down a bit. I think I might have given the last issue a 6 as well. So it's The not- problem with the series is it says on the intro nets that I'm looking up now that it's only 6 issues. Yeah, yeah, I was actually trying to find it as well. And yeah, that that's a problem. I that's mean, a like a uh, six issue mini, you should tell one solid story. I mean, you get in, have a beginning, middle, end, and now in the middle, we're changing it up. And having a tie in with Catwoman. And that's the thing. That's the thing. The idea of, yeah, the idea of the Harper stuff, I don't mind it, but I kind of wish that would have been like the first issue and a half. Get out of that. The progression seems smooth. And then get on to something else of what she's doing, make her bigger or whatever. But it just feels kind of like, okay, we're going back to that. It just feels weird. Now that we're talking about it, six issue, it really feels odd. But it's we're getting this a lot lately. We kind of had that whole play in the beginning of her Catwoman run, but we also had it in the Poison Ivy story. Like, people don't seem no, to, be able to get in, in and out. Thing. Yeah, they can't get in and out in the, the time that they're given, but we'll see. Maybe she can pull it together. Maybe this will be. And by the end, I'm like, oh, I'm glad we went back to Harper and Cullen and we got that resolved and maybe we get something out of that. But it's all going to go with sales. And I, I don't I don't hear people, you know, dissing the book, but I don't hear a lot of people praising it either. It seems like something that's kind of getting lost in the cracks. What but would you say that I'm doing? You are you're pretty positive on it you're All more right. positive than Listen me i'm a little me. lower than you i'm not the purveyor of positivity on me. friday yeah i'm it's it's okay it's, it's I've, read, I've read a lot of <laughs> worse books at this point in time in dc's library i would take a book that's not bad and and here's what we've heard and i've heard this from multiple sources what you end up having with teeny howard she's very very nice she doesn't cause problems and she's on time the antithesis of jim Warner. That is, no, yeah, really, <laughs> everything. But that's something where, you know, editorial is going to love that. She's not any bit of a hassle. She does seem, again, in that she's coming in from a lot of Marvel stuff or whatnot. And she's coming in and pulling Harper Row in. She did a, a little bit of homework. There's not much to read with Punchline, but yeah, she, she knows what's going on. Like I said, the dialogue, it's not bad. It's just the story just doesn't have the spark that I wish it had. But, We'll move on to the next book. And the next book, it's an anniversary, Eric. It is Hooray. an epic, epic Happy showdown. Jim. It said I looked at it. Thank you. I, I looked at it. Is this is 25 the wood anniversary? I don't know. You'll find out. Or is that just in your pants? <laughs> oh, my. We're clowning around here. You end up where all of that going on. You know what's the best is when I hit that after saying what? It really reminds me that we have a morning zoo going on. It really feels that's morning zoo us, and that's all I ever wanted. That's all I ever wanted. But you end up where even DC has in the solicit this epic number 25. Oh, my God. And Stephanie Phillips' time on Harley is coming to an end. And we were down with the book until Fear State. We were actually liking it a lot. And then it kind of, you know, fizzled. But we ultimately learned to love Kevin. Yeah, Kevin we like. And that's the, the thing. At one point, At one point we thought, oh, no, because when she went into space, Kevin wasn't there. But when we got back to this, who killed Harley, it looked like it was going to be really a Kevin story. That Hopefully. Harley, yeah, that was on the side. But it was Kevin bringing her back. He's kind of got left behind again. He's here, but he's not doing Kevin stuff. He's not. It being utilized as much as Kevin should. Stuff. Kevin just wants to be Kevin. I really wish that Kevin was like Styles and had crazy shirts each. You know, each Were issue. You looking at little, yeah, like stuff like that. It would, I think that would have fit nice Kevin shirt, pretty Kevin. well. Yeah, actually, I wish Kevin every issue we would also see he's doing something that is kind of popular in the headlines because he does. He's a follower. So oh. all of a sudden, like, but he's always kind of wrong with it. Like so last dabbing. issue, like last issue, he's doing dabs. And then this one, he's ice bucket challenge. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> dabbing. With this, is, this is why DC's not calling can, for writers. Can you imagine the idea where Kevin does something and then dabs? 
That's <laughs> all I want, honestly. Oh, that'd be so great. See, there you go. Come on, Stephanie. I know she hates our guts. Still, here we go. Harley Quinn number 25. Written by Stephanie Phillips, art by Matteo Lowley, David Baldion, Rain Barreto, and D. Ron or Darren Bennett. And yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go multiverse here, Eric, as if we didn't have enough Look, of that lately. And I was I was thinking about this when I was after I got done reading this issue. The idea that we feel like you know we were revealed that the person who killed Harley Quinn was the Harley Quinn who laughs, and I got upset because the idea. Whenever you think of that, you can't help but think of the dark multiverse. But since we live in a world of infinite Earths at this point in time. We saw Earth-11 Batwoman become, you know, the Batwoman who laughs. That wasn't Dark Multiverse. So it doesn't have to be Dark Multiverse later. We can have any Earth where Harley Quinn becomes, you know, fucking a Cenobite for whatever reason, become the Harley Quinn who laughs. And for whatever reason, she wants to kill the rest of the Harleys. Like, it's the, uh, what was that Jet Li movie? Was it called The One, where he's going around and killing all the other it was versions the one. of stuff? And, and the funny play is, what this is, when I and I have it in my notes, this is Jet Li's The One meets Rick and Morty. That's yeah. all I thought of the whole but entire time. The problem with it is, like, I don't ever want to see another person who laughs again because I hate the aesthetic and it took over DC Comics for so long with the dark metal and stuff like that, or death metal. I don't want to see it anymore because it's just overplayed, overused, and I'm sick of it. But when you have this here, the interesting part of the book was the idea that Harley Quinn died, was put into a Lazarus pit, and looked like she came back wrong. I want to deal with that because that's what, where the story seemed to go. All of that story bits seem to have been dropped completely to deal with old Lady Harley and the Harley Quinn who laughs, and I have no idea why. Yeah, which to me, old Lady Harley, most of us, more timeline. But it's, and it doesn't really look exactly like her, but that's a cool callback. Yeah. We ended up, it was Frank Thierry's story. We ended up reading it. We liked it enough. But when you're going through this, they really want to distance themselves from the, the Harley by not saying anything about like Harley who laughs, things like that. So they go hot with the, Oh, look at you, goth. Hey, even the idea of, hey, 2005, yeah, called. I'm like, no, no, no. Two years ago called because that's all you could get here. Even when she comes out, I wouldn't mind it if we had the grim clown. Like, really go for it if you're going to go Where's for part, it. I was going to say, hey, look, it's Hot Topics, uh, Harley. But I'm like, no, Harley Quinn's already kind of shopping a Hot Topic, it looks like. Where I think that you're right in the idea of where they missed the boat, where Stephanie Phillips missed the boat, was the idea that a lot of people – Fighting online, Harley is a big character that they'll sure. say she should be a villain. You ended up where oh this sucks, and there are real big Harley fans that I end up even not even a villain, stuff on but YouTube. people don't want her on the Bat Family. It seems like well they don't the want Justice that. League. They don't. They want her to be you know this you know, by herself. She doesn't need to be with the Joker, but by herself, kind of doing Harley stuff, and they think that it's gone wrong. And a lot of people legitimately blame. Uh, Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor for changing some things up, even though that's what we're going with from here yeah. on out. And Jimmy Palmiotti, that I'm telling you, I end up following and that some was people his own thing. It's on, weird. yeah, I, I end up following some people on YouTube, and they end up posting stuff, and it's always railing about Jimmy Palmiotti and what he tweeted, and all. they get really upset about it. But the idea where she goes in that Lazarus pit, and you could play with that idea. Oh my God, when she comes back, is she coming back wrong, or is she actually now? Right, because of what people and you could have played all these things going on. Where obviously Kevin, who loves Harley, Kevin's the freaking heart of this story. Int- like bring him in and make this about them and friendship and all that great shit that we love to read about in DC comics. Not the fucking Harley Quinn who laughs and now old lady Harley, which is you're fine basically still. just throwing nonsense in here to try to tell jokes and things you like threw that. The potential when you, away for this. You have the heart of the book, Kevin. Who I mean, seriously. When Harley starts talking, you can see that Stephanie Phillips is trying to get the feels and trying to show that she knows Harley. One of the things about it, though, you almost go to the Buffy. You know, I was in heaven and I didn't really oh want God, to come back. So was. OK, and that could. Have, but the idea of don't tell Kevin, though, because he brought that was really good. The, the idea that the she book. says, don't tell Kevin because he, he was a hero. He brought me back. And he really loves me. Ever but since I, I came back, I feel like I'm missing something inside. Yeah, and I it's, can't it's tell Kevin Buffy. because of the guilt. would Exactly. I'm saying it's not heaven, but it's essentially the same thing when they brought Buffy Summers back and Buffy the exactly. Vampire Slayer. And you could play with this. Now, are they going to play with this? I doubt it. But, you know, she might actually say, I don't even have a soul now. I, I'm ending up all this stuff, whatever. But, yeah. But the big play to me would have been Harley comes back. Go with the classic Lazarus pit where you're crazed. You go around. And Kevin kind of loses her and doesn't know where and is so upset that I wanted to bring Harley back. But should I have, I mean, play with this whole deal and then eventually even have that sit down like I was in a different place, Kevin. And 
thank you for bringing me back, but maybe you shouldn't have. And Kevin would just say, but I love you. I, I don't want you to be dead. And then they could have, you know, you would add some feels. And in this, like I said, you get some feels. But again, it's just it's too much jokiness of, hey, we're going to go. And I'm you have the Harley who laughs, who's killing all the Harleys. But you don't even have the fun of seeing all of them. I would have liked to have seen if you're going to go. Yeah, but they just show up then. There's a mermaid, bar- the Harley. I keep wanting to say Barbie for some reason. I don't know why. It's the Council of Ricks by the end. I mean, they all show up and do that. But even then, you have repeat lines because all the Harleys are the same. So you're going to have the one Harley, the Harley, the, you know, old lady Harley is saying, there hey, Harley? is there a mermaid? And then you have her say, oh, is there a mermaid? Okay, we get it. But there it's is. just a weird play <laughs> and the idea yeah, there is and you end up seeing it. So that's Which kind is of funny fun because deal. the thing is, it has nothing to do with the story. It probably has no inspiration in this at all. But the idea it really did remind me for the idea. Is there a mermaid Harley? Like, they're so fixated on this throughout the multiverse, all the different Harleys. But it does remind me of the one character from the movie Cabin in the Woods. And the whole idea of that movie is so the people who come to the cabin, they unleash whatever horror they have because it could be any different things. And the people in the control room, they place bets on who it's going to be. And the guy always picks a merman because he just wants to see a goddamn merman and he never gets to see it. And that's what it reminded me of here. He got killed by the merman by the end. And maybe, yeah, maybe we will have, you know, some things going forward, but I'd like to know what the mermaid Harley actually always wonders what there is. Like, you know, what does the mermaid say when, oh, what Harley were you wondering about? Oh, I was wondering, is there... Are there feet? Are there Harleys with feet? Yeah, you have the pirate Harley. You see some of these, but they really don't really play out that well. Uh, and one looks like a big Tony Harley, which is kind of funny. And then a Harley might. You know, right? Harley might. Is it the Harley might or is this the Chibi Harley? It might be. It looks like the Chibi. But yeah. And then you have classic. Huh? Yeah. It, it didn't. It didn't wow me. I, that's a page that I wish that you had, you know, in the middle, have a spread page of all these. Guys. Even if you had them all come and they're like, ah, oh, we're out of here and leave. But the real play of this is, is that every time they try to take down the Harley who laughs, she uses her little gizmo gadget to hit into the multiverse vortex and get away from manipulator. them. Yeah, so they end up going. And that, I thought they were going to grab a hold of it and then start going through the multiverses. That's what we were going to do. But instead, out we of nowhere, it. we have Killer Frost show up to freeze her, but then end up wondering why they're they. It was a weird play. It was okay. I wish again where Stephanie Phillips has something here. That I don't think she utilizes the idea that Killer Frost was always a villain and then they made her into a hero. And it's the path that Harley wants to take and kind of did. And they never really get into that. And I think the that when you have those I, two together. I was okay with it just because I know they were both on John Kent's Justice League and that's the only connection that they need right now. Because I expect Mr. Freeze to show up. Yeah, I just wanted to have, you know, some. And also, I mean, you're missing out on a lot of Batman and Robin puns with the, the Mr. Freeze Arnold. Uh, but you end up where. This whole play of, man, Harley, you were this and that. Like, it's it's Killer Frost saying, and it just kind of felt weird. But overall, they froze the Harley who laughs, but they kind of take a little too long. But eventually, they end up being able to take some things down and press the button to get yeah, the you, you, multiverse you get, portals to go. Well, that's the thing is you have the, the Harley. Oh, Harley Quinn and old Lady Harley are teamed up against the Harley Quinn who laughs. And we have to stop her and get her multiversal, like, you know, gauntlet that she's wearing that allows her to go world to world to kill all the Harleys off. We need to get that away from her and stop her. It doesn't work so well. We get Killer Frost, which is fun to see her here. She's not much for her to do except for to use some freeze powers. And like I said, I like seeing that connection with the Justice League that we had during the Dark Crisis. That's a little fun, but it's only there if you read Dark Crisis. Otherwise, it's just, hey, there's a Frost lady. That's it. No real connection unless you read Dark Crisis. And even that, it's a very small connection. But ultimately, they end up just trying to, like, Harley just goes and breaks the Vortex Manipulator because, you know, to make sure that the Harley Quinn who laughs can't get it. And that opens up a shit ton of portals where all our other Harleys do come out of that. So I'm just sitting there, though. Yes, we have a lot of portals open to all of these different multiversal worlds where all of these Harleys are coming out. But how do we get the Harley Quinn who laughs and the old lady Harley home? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, the old lady Harley, is she going to be able to get... Oh, <laughs> Luke, Luke Fox is going to fix it. Yeah, and I, I think that they were also uh, on the Suicide Squad together in the, if I remember right, they were the part of the team, the Justice League versus the Suicide Squad. Remember when we had that? That makes big sense. Yeah, that's what she had that switch. Stuff with Killer Frost at the deal. Yeah. So I think that that was a part two. So they do have a background, which is fine. But when they show up, it just. It, it felt weird, like Killer Frost going on about, like, oh, you, you're bad and you're this or whatnot. I'm like, I don't know. It just didn't seem spot on. And I think that you could have utilized that a little more. But again, Kevin is barely, Kevin is there to say, don't tell Kevin. 
I yeah. wanted more of Kevin as well. Like at this point, Dario in the Catwoman book, who we always play off as kind of like a Kevin, he's upped his game. What, what are you doing, Kevin? Kevin's just walking around. I want him to actually be dressed up like Harley. Because again, he goes full out Joker when she, they, just all out Harley. You know, he's like, you know. Do you think that Harley will be more infatuated or wondering about the mermaid Harley? Because she did ask about it. Or is it the Batwoman Harley that we, or not Batwoman, but like the, the, like, uh, the woman bat Harley, the freaking half the woman bat, bat half Harley. The bat Harley just freaks me out. Because right, right there, it, she it, always wanted to be a part of the bat family and the idea that you actually have a Harley who is a bat. I'm surprised they don't even have like a poison ivy Harvey, or Harvey. I'm thinking of Harvey Quinn when I was talking. That's who I want well, Kevin okay, to end up being. Because even like, the idea of Jet Lee's the one, I was thinking like, isn't this something that Harley Sid was doing because she didn't like the gang of Harleys as yeah, well? Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's exactly what was going on. She wanted to take them all down because she thought they were nonsense. So, I, it would have been funny if Harley Sin was here even, but we'll have to see how it plays out. But yeah, at the end, I it just again, it just ends up being another part of a, a story where I'm like, you could have done a lot more with this. I, oh, I, I see what you're of. doing and it's not terrible. We've you had took worse issues of have Harley. Yeah, yeah. And you had this gag, but the gag never, you didn't go full out in the gag either. It's one of those things where Stephanie Phillips really feels like lately, it's like we have a gag. You want to use it, but you don't go full out. Even when they go into space, you, you kind of end up meandering a bit, and then you center on something, but it never really is funny or there that fun. There is a fun. bit in this where old lady Harley and Harley Quinn talk about the idea with a multiverse full of Harleys. There must be one out there that never met the Joker. I'm like, will they come across this and find out? You know, maybe it, like you know, the Joker didn't ruin them the way they think they did because the Harley Quinn the never mermaid. Met it. maybe didn't do as well as they have in life because they they end up talking about. That. And they end up talking about a lot of these multiversal Harleys ended up staying with the Joker. So is there one that never met the Joker? And that it's just, you really it would be funny if it's just this lady and, you know, she's dressed up in her psychology deal. And yeah, what are you talking about, Joker? I'm just a psychologist. It might end up just being that, which would be OK. Maybe Harley. Or you just find out that you have, talk. she has a predisposition to these kind of over the top personalities where she's always destined to you have a like maybe there's a universe where the Joker's not there and you have like a Harley Quinn like Mr. Freeze version or something something along the lines where she just latched like on to said, somebody I'm else because that's you who she is have a poison ivy you know Harley yeah. amalgam type deal that you would have at that but it, it like would it's be not cool. their fault they're always going to be predisposed to have this for whatever reason and now just to point it out, one of the things, though, that I'm thinking now, because they are really saying multiverse and there is infinite Earth, so you can play that game. Kind of wish that we saw some legit. Oh, my God, that must be the like what would be cool is what would the Batman 66 Harley look like? That's a cool thing. That would be a neat play. And in the end, you're just like, oh, there you go. Yeah, you have a pirate Harley that could be from that right. pirate planet. Sure I is. want the, the Wolfman. Where's the Wolfman Harley? Because we could have that. The, the I, maybe I, I would want some of that. Maybe I want more of, you know, play this out and let me see a clever take on a lot of these multiverse deals. Because then you could even go Earth 11 is what well, I'm talking about. Who, who, who do you think about Harvey. Is, Harvey Quinn, yeah. Who do you think the main one in the center who just looks like Harley Quinn? Like, what do you think her deal is? I see her. She has the pal. She uh, just well, looks like Harley. Yeah, yeah. That is true. <laughs> Well, again, I think... There's the animated series ones there? Have the animated series there. Uh, that is the New 52 side continuity. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see if it goes because the pow powder puff deal looks straight up, and I forget her name, but looks straight up from the Gang of Harleys. That's on her side there. Uh, looks like one of those, but I don't think that would be the case. And, you know, you just have some weird plays. I like so that we'll little Harley. Yeah, I do too. I like the little girl Harley there with the little Joker doll. That oh, yeah. makes me laugh. Actually, it really looks like it's playing off even that last night. She's got the glasses too. Yeah, she's got that. Yeah, really. I didn't even see the glasses. Those are pretty cool. Yeah, I like her. She's pretty cool. And he, again, I, I like the idea of the bat and actually looks like, you know, a man bat yeah. version of well, that. I was trying to say, it's like not a man, it's a woo man bat. Yeah, woo man <laughs> bat. There you go. And then you have a demon version yeah. there. It looks like a little firestorm. It's right? him. A little firestorm, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, what would you give it? The thing is, I look forward to where this is going because it can be a lot of fun. I just think they missed the boat on telling a bigger, more profound story dealing with Holly Quinn that they had set up with the Lazarus pit and the idea of her coming back wrong and Kevin 
to have this gimmick situation. The gimmick's not fun. The last page is fun just because of the possibilities of having the, the, like the wackiness of the next issue. But overall, having old lady Harley here, it's a fun callback. Harley Quinn, who lasts, and very disappointing as our main antagonist because it's just nonsense that I don't want to think about in DC Comics anymore. And really, this issue doesn't do much with the progression. It's like, hey, you're here. Hey, there's this person over here. We better come up with a plan to take it. Hey, there's Killer Frost. That's kind of cool, but still doesn't do much because it doesn't, ultimately, it doesn't even do much when she does. So we just have the thing, like the portals open up at the end. That's the high point of this issue. The art's great throughout, though. I like this whole thing. I look forward to the next issue. I just wish the storyline could have been better than it was. I'm going to give it a 5.8 out of 10. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with 6 again. It's just that. And and the weird play is, like, now I was looking. I'm I'm wondering who that main one is, that center one. I'm like... It's not the bombshells one, which I kind of wish we saw her as well. But Very are cool. we going to get the? Are we going to get the lame where they're going to point at each other next issue? Like you know, do the Spider Man nonsense? But you know why the, not? The, well, yeah, actually, if you're going to do it, just do it. But, I'm surprised you didn't have it with Old Lady Harley. Yeah, the the play that, and I'll give credit for the Old Lady Harley because it's a nice callback. But you don't need to have read Old Lady Harley. Yeah, you you don't. might end up getting caught up in that deal. You're going to throw a lot of people off. But if you have read Old Lady Harley, you almost like want a little bit more, a little bit talk of that, but you don't need it. It's there. But the big play here is, again, it's it's that weird pull back and forth that a lot of these books end up having where Stephanie Phillips seems to be caught between. And we said at the beginning, remember the whole play was me and you were debating which Harley was even in this book. And I'm not right. saying continuity wise. I'm saying, is it the jokey Harley or is it the. The Harley that wants to be a hero is the one who wishes people gave her more credit for the psychology stuff. And it never really centered it. It kind of went all around and never really felt like she could figure that out. But then in this, we're starting to keep going with there's feels to be had, but you get those, but not enough because she wants to tell a joke that doesn't hit to get back to this. And you got to decide what this book is. And I, I think in 25 issues, she still hasn't decided that. She still hasn't figured out this formula. Kevin well, at least we decided this long that we have it. good art. Yeah, yeah, the art's good. It's not Riley Rossum anymore. <laughs> I mean, seriously. At I least tell I you, can tell what's going on here. I will tell you, I, for, I, I wasn't really thinking about the idea of the, the Harley Quinn who laughs when I jumped in this book. I knew she was in this, and that was a big antagonist of it. But when we started out, it was out of my mind because, holy shit, it's old lady Harley. She's at a freaking intergalactic poker game, it looks like. Everybody's about to turn their guns over when a portal opens. And when we see the portal open, we see these spiked boots come out. And I thought at first that it was going to be Lobo. And I got excited because I saw the spiked that boots. That would have been like, funny. You know, almost like spiked heels to a degree. But I thought the way they looked initially, I was like, well, it's Lobo. Then I turned the page, and it's the Harley Quinn who laughs. And I'm like, Mm. Yeah, it's just chains and <laughs> For shit. For some reason, that, like, I want Old Lady Harley and Lobo to team up and have adventures. I, I even like you almost waited for whatever. Like I don't have a joke here, but the joke would be like, "Oh, you're the the Harley Quinn that laughs." But but I always laugh. I I there could have been something there, but instead they're like, "Hey, 2005 call." I'm like, really? Like you, you're not even playing what you're doing here. It was weird. Uh, but yeah, yeah at the, the end, the I think that. Called. Yeah, exactly. That'd be pretty funny. Violent Jays there. What happened if all of a sudden, now seriously, Kevin showing up where he's like, hey, I'm in here, and he has Juggalo fit. He would fit right in. I mean, he'd look like your ass back in the day, you fat ass. Back in yes. two. <laughs> he would fit, though, right? Even with that back joke. 1999. That Joker tattoo, all that. Oh, my God, he'd be the hit. Comes out just drinking Fago. <laughs> that would have been Violent great. K. Oh, that, that would that have been great. Why couldn't they have done that? I fat shame, Derek. I'm going to get canceled. Uh, but yeah, that's that. Sitting there drinking his Shago. <laughs> yeah, see, there you go. And it's your name. They're going to give you that deal. <laughs> it's the Shago, it is. Oh, that'd be funny. That would have been good. He would be like a, a good juggler. I, I've seen guys, I see jugglers who looked like him back in the and day. And I'm telling you, have him and have him like dressed up, and you're like, well, but one of the Harleys come out like that too. And he's like, oh, man, you know, we're solid. And then they make them dance and stuff and throw shit at them. I don't know what goes on with these jugglers there. <laughs> Sitting here like, what, what are you talking that, that about? Was, that wasn't my scene. Uh, but yeah, it's a shame. It always ends up, you could have done something. Were you, you hiding out at the Lilith Fair at that point? Yeah, I was at the Lilith Fair at the one point. Right to the men's room. Not a line to be seen <laughs> there. It's like, oh man, these lines. Are, oh wait, the men's room. That's clear. All right. I better hurry up. Sarah McLaughlin's going to be on soon. I'm going to cry. I want to think of my dog and cry, so I ended up having to go. I'm like, oh, Natalie Merchant. All right. Yeah. Honestly, you say that. I got, that, that show was stacked, too, though. Yeah, it was pretty good. We went. It was at Hershey. 
ultimately ended up seeing yeah. it, and it was raining. It was raining pretty bad. That was all the tears of all the crowd, Jim. It was. It was because of Sarah McLaughlin. I mean, she yeah. says, I will remember. I'm like, oh, no, a pepper. Pepper it been made dead my eyes pepper rain. Been dead by <laughs> Ten years. Pepper, what's going on? I will remember you. Da, 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 da. Oh my god. <laughs> uh but that's that. That is it for the T G I F, the Thank God It's Friday, going a little bit of the clowning's around. Going eight and clowning around. <laughs> this week we still have a bunch of books. We have a couple endings, a couple beginnings, I would like to say. They're not really, but we have Action Comics number ten fifty. That's kind of a beginning. That is an ending. Heading towards the fresh start of Action Comics and the Superman family. We have Blue Beetle Graduation Day, number Ooh, two. We I end up wait. having the end of DC vs. Vampires, DC vs. Vampires, number 12. Better knock my socks off. The initial reviews from what usually are the shills, not good, Eric. DC vs. Vampires, really not wowing people. Average of a 7-1. Right yeah, now, and that's that's good stuff. and that's not good for the people who are giving those reviews. I mean, there there's some people here. If they go under a nine point five, they start getting the chills. You end up Detective Comics number one thousand sixty seven. That's the Orgums. That the Orgums there because it's the Wolfman's, and they're you know the weird man. reviews where people are like. The, the story could progress quicker, but boy, it's awesome. Ten out of ten. Well, I think that we're gonna have the same as what we usually get with Ram V. Or Ram V, as I've heard him uh, pronounced on the end. Or as I've heard you pronounce uh, V-Ram. V-Ram. That's, I think he goes by that sometimes when he's checking in the hotels in Cleveland. Oh. We'll see how that plays out. I haven't been a big fan of the story more than everybody else, it seems. I'm the only one. Uh, but we also end up having, I'm going down because we already the talked book about John Stewart and the Emerald week. Knight. But we also have Tim Drake, Robin, number four, wondering if Eric Ooh, Shea wait. will give it the book of the so. week. It is not getting great reviews from the no. usual suspects, but also user reviews. The book will always have a chance to become good. I, I say that it'll be canceled before it has that chance, but it could always have the chance to d- become the Tim Drake book that I wanted to be. And the last issue when I gave it my book of the week with Tim Drake, Robin, yeah, the last three, issue, yeah. I saw the glimpse. I saw something that made me think, maybe we can get this where I need it to be. That is the reason it became my book of the week. Plus, you know, it did more than the rest of the issues. You got the fan service wool pulled over your eyes. I think that this gets back to, let's solve this mystery, eh? We should be beyond that in my mind. You know, we're going to put the pieces together of the puzzle of the mystery of the enigma of the whisper down the lane. I uh, I really don't know what the hell that whole thing is. It's just a nothing story. But overall, again, that'll be stuff we'll talk about. And eventually we'll get back to our $25 do or die pull list still. And we should soon. Yeah. In the upcoming months, totally. Yeah. I wonder what is that Tim Drake book's going to be on yours. I wonder. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. But that's a reason to tune into the regular show. See how much Eric loves the Tim Drake book. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. Please check out all of the links in the show notes. We'll leave it at that. Check out our regular main podcast comes out Sunday night. If you want to get early access to it, go to the Patreon, patreon.com slash weird science. But that's it. Eric, what do we say at the end of the Thank God It's Friday? In a world full of chimps, always make sure you go ape. Go read comics. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.